Welcome to Issues, a program that explores topics affecting Wilmington and you, the people who live in, work in, or visit this wonderful city. I'm your host, John Rago, and on today's program, the issue is new living opportunities in Wilmington. We, you know, we're absolutely thrilled to be welcoming new people into our city. Uh, we're also encouraged that many current residents are still in love with urban living and are moving to new locations in the city, such as the riverfront and downtown districts. We've talked for years about a new Wilmington emerging from the old with new and revitalized neighborhoods. Well, is it finally happening? Well, we'll explore that question today and joining us to explore that topic of new living opportunities in Wilmington are Robert Snowberger, who is the development manager for the Buccini Poland Group, and Dr. Kerry Gray, who is the managing director of the Wilmington Renaissance Corporation. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us. You know, I, uh, I, I use some of these, uh, uh, these terms, a new Wilmington emerging from the old, and we have, you know, you're, they're probably familiar to you. you. You all have been around for a while, and you've heard some of this. I'm just not, I'm not sure how excited, and we're going to talk about some exciting projects today, the Creative District and also some new um, Puccini Poland projects coming along. And, and my word, we've been talking about Puccini Poland projects for years, which is great. Thank goodness for that company and all they have put into the city of Wilmington. And now the Renaissance Corporation is off on a new tangent, which is the uh, creative district. But before we get into some of the particulars, I, I, as a native Wilmingtonian who loves the city, I'm not sure how excited to get about all this. Um, it, you know, I, for years we've asked ourselves the question, it's like the chicken or the egg question. Uh, do we bring the, uh, uh, the new living opportunities and the new other amenities that go along with that and then the people will come or do we bring do we need to bring the people first before we'll have stores that we like and other retail outlets I don't know how excited should I be about what's happening in Wilmington you guys are on the streets every day very <laughs> very excited really yeah I mean there is so much happening in the city and in particular in the downtown every day uh, you walk Market Street and a new sign is going up where a new business is opening or there's cranes or there's scaffolding and there's construction happening. And I just think, you know, we, that all of us that have been working toward this goal of a better city, a better Wilmington, and in particular a better downtown, have been hoping that the tipping point would be, you know, somewhere in the, on the horizon. And I think we really, you know, we've been seeing multiple tipping points over the years. When Buccini Poland ma first made their investments with residential uh, 15 years ago, that was a major tipping point for Wilmington. And now all this additional investment is another tipping point. So uh, there's no silver bullet and there's mm -hmm. no, you know, one solution fits all. I think it's a constant evolution. And, and this is really one of the most exciting times in my 17 years of living in the city and working on behalf of the city that I've seen, so I'm pretty excited. I don't know about yeah, you. No, absolutely, <laughs> I couldn't, couldn't agree with Carrie more. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for us as a company that's adding housing stock to the market, uh, you know, I can only report what we see in our portfolio, and that's 97% occupancy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it was really fun when I started working for BPG. Uh, you know, everyone in Wilmington would ask, you know, how are the towers doing on the riverfront? You know, mm -hmm. there's things empty. You know, I look at night to see the lights on. I got to tell you, you know, across the portfolio on the riverfront and also in the residence of Rodney Square downtown along Market Street, we're around 97% occupied, yeah. uh, and that's why we keep building. Hmm. Right. Well, that's, that's certainly wonderful. And I, I don't mean to ask the question as though I'm living in a bubble here in, in, in city government, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I mean, you, you, you need to test the mood of, uh, of what's happening out there. And I want to say something to our viewers. You know, I get a lot of comments about different subjects, and we've uh, we've uh, covered things like education and um, re-entry and uh, the criminal justice system in, in recent shows and people are always offering comments to us but I, I, I want to say this um, uh, we learned a number of years ago here in Wilmington that residents who are necessarily tucked in on the east side of the city or the west side of the city or north or south wherever you may be you don't necessarily come out of those areas enough to kind of see what's happening in other parts of the city. We actually did uh, bus tours at one point when we mm -hmm. took people around the city and they said, oh my goodness, I didn't know this was happening in our city. And I say that because, um, you know, I think I encourage people to do that. I think that would add to the excitement of folks who, who will say, now look, 
I'm, I'm going to tell you, uh, let's be frank about this. There are people who are living in neighborhoods right now where crime is the major issue. Mm -hmm. We certainly understand that. But I, I think it's also important for those folks to know t what else is happening in their city, too. I mean, I think it just brings us general encouragement that we're trying to make a difference here in Wilmington and we're trying to create a new kind of city. Um, so uh, le let me go back to what these two projects or the projects that you're involved in right now. Uh, what, the, the way I look at it is, I look at Market Street. I remember years ago thinking, wow, if we could just get Market Street finished. Well, now it seems like, if, unless I'm mistaken, just about all of Market Street, that spine, is finished. And some of that is from the, what was called the Upstairs Fund mm -hmm. that was started years ago under the previous administration to make sure there was some money to uh, convert those second and third floors to apartments and then retail on the first floor. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me, Rob, that, uh, that as part of that, you call it the portfolio, but as, as, as far as everything that falls under the BPG uh, uh, leadership, um, that you're doing that well. I mean, there are people living up. See, I didn't even, I didn't even know that, that they're living up and down <laughs> yeah. Market Street like that. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, uh, specifically up and down Market Street, um, you know, we had a significant investment in terms of commercial in the downtown area. Mm -hmm. You know, we own office buildings as well as, you know, the big residence of Rodney Square residential. And then we also obviously built on the riverfront with Christina Landing, Justin Landing, the IMAX Theater, um, and all the other development going on the riverfront. Market Street was that natural spine, as right. you said, and uh, you know, but it was also somewhat of a risk because you know people we were relatively confident would live next to their office buildings mm -hmm. in the residence of Rodney, mm -hmm. and then the waterfront is just a uh, riverfront is a success, you right. know, no matter how you measure it, um, and so Market Street was somewhat of a, a gamble, but uh, when Chris and Rob Buccini um, started buying up the parcels along Market Street, and as you said, the upstairs fund was integral in that because. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of these old buildings were so far uh, out of date that they never would pass the uh, modern day code. Yeah. And so it was, you know, extremely important. But as you, as you said, you know, we're really kind of now putting the finishing touches on it. You know, yeah. we, we are, our own company owns uh, 40 units right now along Market Street, um, which by the way, by the end of the year, we'll be adding 150 to that stock, which I'm sure nice. we'll talk about. But currently we own 40 and uh, we own and operate 40 above ground, fo ground floor retail. And uh, you know, as of as of July, at least I know we couldn't. If you wanted one today, we couldn't give you one. Mm -hmm. you know, I have to double check to make sure that's still uh, right. the case. But uh, but yeah, I mean, people um, and the demographics are amazing. You know, we yeah. have um, people who work at the Brandywine Zoo. We have uh, you know teachers. We have uh, you know baristas. We have everybody living in our portfolio. And there's like you said, there really is a part of Wilmington that everyone who's escaped the suburbs is really missing out on. Yeah. Well, thank goodness that trend reversed itself. Uh, you know, what, that's what happened to Wilmington uh, in the late 60s, 70s, 80s. Everybody taken off into the suburbs. And then, of course, for those of you who are out in the suburbs right now, ha ha, because, <laughs> and I, I'm sorry to, to, to kind of say it that way, but, you know, uh, those of us who are in, uh, live in an urban area and were born and raised in an urban area, you know, kind of see urban areas springing up in the suburbs now. So it's amazing. And so now mm -hmm. folks are coming back. Um, now, let me take our viewers from the spine of Market Street, if you will, for just a moment. And then let me turn to Kerry, because mm -hmm. now, now let's talk about the Creative District. And I, what I want our viewers to imagine for just a moment is that we're now taking an area which is uh, contiguous, if you will, to the downtown area. But now we're expanding that excitement out further out toward Washington Street, up 9th, 4th, and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So let's talk about this thing called the Creative District. Sure. So about three years ago, we gathered together a group of partners to talk about, you know, what the next evolution would be for Wilmington Renaissance's work mm -hmm. and for the redevelopment of the downtown. And very consciously, you know, we talked about pushing the investment that had been happening on Market Street further west. Um, into Quaker Hill and into the, the neighborhoods beyond and really stretching that spine and thickening that spine of Market Street to become multiple blocks mm -hmm. of investment. And so we talked about how, you know, what are some best practices from around the country? How do we make that sustainable? What do we see happening in terms of trends um, in other cities? And so did a lot of research and, and had a lot of conversations with different groups of folks, including residents and landed on a strategy that, that is called creative placemaking. Um, and essentially what that means is that you infuse the arts and culture that, in, that are inherent to the area 
into um, the, the sense of place to that location. And so, you know, if you have uh, a church that has a dance troupe or a chorus group that you bring that group out of the building that they're housed in and put them on the street to perform so that people start to see what is actually some of the assets, what are some of the cultural assets that are in that community. Um, you do public art installation in conjunction with the residents and you talk about murals and sculpture and mm -hmm. lighting as um, functional art as a way to express the, the feel of that community. And so, um, so that is what the Creative District's vision plan is grounded in mm -hmm. and the document itself is meant to spur people's thoughts about what's possible in this area. And some of it we're already working on and working toward. Um, and, and those are the things that kind of are the, the very first ground level, this makes sense to work on first yeah, objectives. You, well, obviously you're taking existing resources, skills, and talents. Mm -hmm. uh, as you say, exposing, making sure people are more exposed to what's mm -hmm. actually happening in their community. Then the other part of this, as I understand it though, is actually converting properties. Mm -hmm. Now you're starting to say, not only to artists locally, but right. maybe even regionally or further mm -hmm. than that, hey, Wilmington might be a good spot to come in and be an artist right. or uh, uh, to feel comfortable mm -hmm. with what you do in your, in your mm -hmm. trade. Is that it? That is. I mean, the, one of the projects that we're working on right now with our partner at Interfaith Community Housing is the redevelopment of six buildings in the Quaker Hill neighborhood, immediately adjacent to the Friends Meeting House. Okay. It's a beautiful part of our city, one of the most historic neighborhoods. It's the last stop of, of what was the last stop of the Underground Railroad. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an amazing part of our city. And you have these beautiful brownstone homes and row homes that have been, um, some of them vacant for many, many years. And so Interfaith has acquired those properties either through um, purchase from the property owner or acquisition that, um, from the city's um, inventory of vacant properties to put together this cluster of what will become three single family homes and three buildings of condominium units. Um, and so we're creating workspaces in those um, residential spaces so that artists that want to work from home will have that ability to do that. And we use that term very broadly. Um, ultimately, you know, we really, you know, we want anyone who wants to be in this neighborhood um, and who sees this housing as attractive to them to want to come there. So exactly. we're not talking about painters exclusively. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> well, and, and, and quite frankly, you don't necessarily have to be an artist. No, you don't. Uh, but if you're, if you're into what you're trying to create over there, that's right. the type of person you want. Right. And you know, it's, it's, um, it's, uh, it's Delaware, I say that all the time, it's Wilmington, it's, we're a, a small uh, town and state, and uh, you mentioned that area next to um, uh, Friends Meeting House. Mm -hmm. And of course, and uh, just a personal note, that's where the, the Rago family <laughs> uh, settled when they came over from Italy. Yes. Yeah. So it's amazing you mm -hmm. know, to see what's happened to the area, and now that that's been picked now for uh, to be part of the Creative mm -hmm. District. It's very exciting. We're, uh, we'll continue the show in just a moment. We've got to take a short break, so stay with us. And we thank you for being with us here on Issues as we explore uh, downtown living or new living opportunities uh, here in Wilmington, because that represents part of the new, new Wilmington, which is, should be very exciting to everyone. I don't care where you live in the city. All that we're talking about today should be exciting to you too. We'll be right back. back to issues where we are exploring what's happening in our city of Wilmington as far as new living opportunities and there are very, some very exciting uh, projects are, that are underway here in the city. If you were uh, not with us in the first segment, our guests 
are reminding us that there are many, many reasons to be excited about this city. I think we allow ourselves at times to get a little bit down. I mean, we know we have serious issues, as any urban area does, with things like crime. Uh, but we can't allow the, the crime issue to kind of uh, depress us. Uh, I think we have to be excited about the fact that there are there's work underway on many other fronts which are trying to kind of lift the city up versus what may be happening over here. Now eventually we'll, we'll get it and we'll have a new, a new kind of city. Um, um, Rob Snowberger is here from uh, BPG and Dr. Carrie Gray is here from the Wilmington Renaissance Corporation. And in the first segment, I, I want to go back a little bit to, um, I'm, I'm so happy to hear of the occupancy rate for all the new um, apartments um, uh, or, or other kinds of living uh, options that are available. I'm, I'm happy to hear the occupancy rate mm -hmm. is, is so high. So you, you told us a little bit earlier about the type of people are, who are here. How hard is it to bring them in? I mean, I know you have a, a group that works on that. Sure. You're essentially recruiting <laughs> people to come in. Yeah. But how hard is it? Well, so, you know, what we see is, you know, we live really close to Philadelphia. So obviously people coming down from Philadelphia to work here, um, as well as, you know, up from Baltimore. So, so they're here to work. Mm -hmm. And while they're here, that's an opportunity for us to kind of, you know, show off Wilmington and say, hey, why do you make that commute every day? You know, why not live close to where you work? So that's definitely one option. And that's the, the kind of standard one where, where you, you know, you make the conversion. But what we're seeing more and more is that people, um, you know, new companies are moving in. And with that comes new managing management positions and, you know, people who, um, you know, essentially are going to be making the investment in this community as well. Right. Um, and so that's another, you know, kind of new source is new companies come in the market. You know, I don't know if uh, this has been widely broadcast, but it was Entrepreneur Magazine and Fast Company ranked Wilmington as number three to start a new business. Great. I think that's tremendous. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when Carrie's talking about Creative District, you know, and not just being painters, you know, we're also talking about uh, a whole class of people who recognize Wilmington as a great catalyst to build their company, and they're looking for affordable housing yeah. um, while they work on their company. Um, mm -hmm. And so Market Street, where the rents aren't like you're going to get in Philadelphia, um, you know, is, is a great place for them to live. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I'm, I'm assuming you still have those who are, um, I mean, clearly it, it, it's better all, all the way around if people uh, live here and work here, mm -hmm. but then there are those who live here but then commute Correct. out yep. and then come back. But yep. that's still mm -hmm. wonderful. I mean, they're still here at the end of the day, yep. and it reverses that trend that we've always talked about, that's right. which is everybody leaves the city. No, folks. Yeah. No, people don't leave the city anymore right. like they, mm -hmm. they used to at the end of the day. They, they're they here. Uh, or they come back in, which is very exciting, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, it's not even, you know, Philadelphia is a classic example. Um, just because it's such a big market just north of us. Mm -hmm. But we're actually starting to see people from, from mm -hmm. Hokessa and mm -hmm. from the suburbs in which we've lost so many city residents. Uh, we're actually starting to see people like that come back. You know, you have empty nesters who are, you know, tired of the big house or whatever it is out mm -hmm. in the, the suburbs coming back to live on Market Street in Wilmington, which yeah. is something that I'm sure a lot of the viewers and a lot of us, you know, potentially would never have imagined that, yeah. that the reverse would happen, but it yeah. is. And the other thing that is it, uh, maybe an eye opener for some watching the program is this, that if you've been in the downtown area, or even off some of the downtown area in the uh, Monday through Friday, a good number of obviously people all over the place and they're you know, working in the uh, high rises and, and so on. It's good to see them out, coming out. But also uh, take, a, take a look at the difference in the, in the nighttime. Mm -hmm. You'll see a difference in what used to be, as they always say, you know, the sidewalks roll up and all that good stuff. But uh, uh, there are more and more things out there for people to do in the city. Now, um, as far as uh, businesses coming in, mm -hmm. I mean, all of this connects. The business, the, if you're trying to attract businesses into the city, it connects with the fact that you've got the workforce that those businesses need. And then if you think about it for just a moment, let me just take a good job here, uh, the, the right person for that job, and now that they've got the work situation settled, they want to enjoy themselves. And now that's where, you know, you add the creative district mm -hmm. and all that that brings in in terms of the, I think it's, they're exciting people. It's exciting what they're doing or what they're going to do and so on. Now, this, this creative district, um, I know is, uh, is it Paducah? 
Paducah, Kentucky yeah. is was originally. I, I remember hearing about this a number of years ago, probably from you. Right. And uh, <laughs> but uh, it, it it's sort of that model, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's not some pie in the sky thing. It's something that has worked in other areas and can work. Mm -hmm. It's um it's actually like a little bit of a conglomeration of a bunch of different models in uh -huh. some ways. So Paducah was a model that was. Um, you know, more similar to a homesteading project where the city sold the houses in Paducah to artists for a dollar oh, and then the, dar the, the artists renovated them. The housing that we're working on right now with Interfaith is so cost prohibitive to have that model work. Nice. Um, the, some of these buildings have been vacant for 30 years. Mm -hmm. So in order for um, someone to renovate that home just to a basic livable standard, you know, it would cost way more than the value of the property is in the neighborhood. and so. That's why you know Interfaith is involved, and and funding like the Strong Neighborhoods Housing Development Fund have helped this project um, get going because mm -hmm. there's a great discrepancy between the cost of what it will take to renovate these units and what they will actually sell for mm -hmm. when we're all done. So, um, so we're looking at you know we've looked at Baltimore and and Providence, Rhode Island, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. I mean we've looked at models all over the country of of how. Um, you know, areas have been revitalized or rejuvenated through the arts and through culture. Mm -hmm. um, and then Paducah's model, it, it, we are replicating because it is a home ownership project. Yeah. We are very focused on home ownership um, in this neighborhood. There will definitely be rental housing for artists at some point down the road, but for us, phase one was about ownership and establishing an anchor presence in the neighborhood that would help you know, make it sustainable in terms of yeah. um, the revitalization there, so. Yeah. And you know, that's so important and for, for any of you who may say to yourself, uh, and, and we had this for, for a long time here in the city, uh, folks thought that all the concentration was on downtown and riverfront and not on the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Well, here is a, a perfect example of taking the, as I say, a contiguous uh, historic neighborhood mm -hmm. and trying to revive that neighborhood, and it includes the people who are there now, along with others or newer mm -hmm. people that uh, new people that may be attracted to uh, to the area, um, and really about how do we build from the strength that is Market Street, mm -hmm. um, you know, and and for us the logic of why this neighborhood made sense. There's probably seven different reasons why this neighborhood made sense, but one of the main reasons was its contiguousness to Market Street yeah. and how we you know kind of take an investment that we're doing in terms of housing at 5th and Washington and all the investment that's been happening on Market Street and bridge the gap between the two right. and then continue to push push west into West Center City. Yeah. Um, so it is about, you know, building from the strength of that investment and pushing west. Is is it, um, uh, I guess, m most, most times we have to say when we're trying to figure out why there's not more progress or how long we have to wait for things to happen, you say follow the money. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that's the situation here. Is it? Uh, I mean, if you had all the money in the world, you could do whatever you wanted to do. We, we sure. all could. But <laughs> um, but I mean, is that where does money come from? Where does it have to come from? Is it just government, uh, foundations, grants? It is yeah. all over the board. It's all of the above, I guess. Uh -huh. Really, um, there's been um, about forty percent of the funding for the Willing Street project is. Um, from private sources, mm -hmm. um, which is actually a significantly large percentage compared to other affordable housing projects around the country. Typically those private sources are like the, the final 20% of the project. Um, so the fact that 40% of the money for this project is coming from private sources mm -hmm. is really, really significant. Um, but the state's Strong Neighborhoods Fund has been a huge help and asset for this project. Um, the downtown development district that was established through the state has been a, a huge mm -hmm. asset mm -hmm. for um, projects, not only through Bugini Poland, but other folks that were awarded money in this area. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that you piece all these pieces together and then suddenly you start to see a little bit more momentum start to take place. Yeah. And I think that's really, you know, a big part of how we can continue this. We need that continuation of um, state, city, county, et cetera, support that then moves these projects forward. Yeah. Downtown uh, Development District, uh, uh, for those who are not familiar with it, was a program where, uh, and the Governor and General Assembly came forward and set some money aside. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, there like, there's a pot of money sitting there, and they essentially look for projects that mm -hmm. can be helped by that money 
and uh, obviously there's a certain um, uh, uh, goal. You have to meet the goals and so on. So, um, and I know I, I know folks are dipping into that mm -hmm. those pots, and I, I think they put some more money aside in the last um, mm -hmm. session of the General Assembly. So that then would account for uh, your optimism, not just the mm -hmm. fact. I mean, let's let's be you know let's be straight up with each other. I mean, you guys have to uh, you have to keep a, 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 a strong face, if you will, strong <laughs> front because you, of what you do. Sure. But you have to also deal with the, the, the realism of what's happening here in the city of mm -hmm. Wilmington. If you had to, and let me ask you just one, let me deviate for just a moment from our excitement about what is happening to the fact that we do have um, an issue which seems to kind of overshadow uh, at times, which is mm -hmm. the, the crime issue. Um, is it, it, it doesn't appear to be hurting over on this side in terms of the uh, people who are, who still believe in urban living, they, what do they have, a different understanding about uh, crime and how it works and whether they're going to be exposed to it is, is I think, the main thing. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's um, on one end, you know, you have the fact <clears throat> that the, uh, the crime rate in, in Wilmington is what it is and, and everybody, you know, kind of feels that. But at the same time, people who want to live in urban areas and mm. cities are used to that no matter where they go. Yeah. You know, if you, if you go up again to Philadelphia, to Baltimore, they have their, their fair share of crime. It's not just only in Wilmington. So, uh, but you know, again, all I can do is, is tell you what our residents think. And, and we're constantly polling our residents to ask, you know, what can we do better? Mm -hmm. You know, what are your concerns? You know, if we built a new building, what would you like it to look like? Um, and I can tell you that in our, in our portfolio, in our, in our residential buildings, 0.8% said that public safety was an issue for them, 0.8. Yeah. So less than 1%. Yeah. So, you know, I think really honestly, it's just the, the areas where people are working and living and playing in terms of, you know, coming in or, or the people who are, uh, you know, revitalizing the, the, the area of Market Street and mm -hmm. downtown or downtown and the riverfront don't see it as an issue. I mean, mm -hmm. there are certainly really bad neighborhoods and, you know, we're, we're working with the creative district to mm -hmm. kind of pull our development from Market Street, as Carrie said, yeah. west into West Center City. I yeah. mean, that's, it's one of our absolute, you know, goals is to work with the creative district to, to kind of pull the development into the to West Center City. Mm -hmm. Midtown Project's an example of that. Yeah. But, um, but for the time being, the residents that are moving back to areas that we're redeveloping are, are comfortable. All right, now, and that, that's good. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, so I have to start saying goodbye already. Oh, no. Now, this program <laughs> uh, is being taped in the middle of September, and it airs through the middle of October. So I know you both have events coming up, but I didn't mention them specifically because mm -hmm. this program will run on. And, and for instance, I, I guess that's my way of saying please check the Wilmington Renaissance Corporation website, mm -hmm. also over on BPG, because, um, you know, all we've talked about here today are things that are online and there's more information available. And I really would encourage everyone in the city of Wilmington to have a, a more complete understanding of what is happening in your city, um, because all of us can somehow contribute to um, sort of a new city that is emerging from the old. If you think about it for just a moment, that's going to be important for all of us as individuals uh, and for our families and then for our neighborhoods. I don't care what neighborhood you're in, uh, all neighborhoods are strengthened when the city as a whole uh, begins to strengthen itself. So. Mm -hmm. But uh, but thanks so much for being here. Okay, for and do do appreciate your time. Thank and you're you. both wonderful uh, uh, folks who care a lot. These two individuals care a lot about this city, and put a lot of um, uh, time and sweat and so on and so forth. Uh, Petula Clark, do you remember uh, Petula Clark? Um, and I won't find it now. I have it here someplace. <laughs> uh, who said? Oh, here it is. I have to do this. I'm um, we're over. I have to do it. Uh, the lights are much brighter here or there. Uh, you can forget all your troubles, forget all your cares, and go downtown. Because things will be great when you're downtown. No finer place for sure. Downtown, everything's waiting for you. Let's apply that to the entire city, not just, not just, not just downtown. What's that from, 50 years ago? All right, but anyway. All right, thank you all very much. Um, we thank you for being with us. And if you have any comments or thoughts on this discussion, you can tweet them to at WITN22WILM hashtag Issues22, or you can post your comments on the video's uh, YouTube page. So for WITN22 and Wilmington City Council, I'm John Rago. Thanks so much for being here.